getting cooler, the grass is growing slower. So the girls aren't just eating the pasture anymore. They like a little hay to supplement. Come on, back. In the late spring and summer, they I would leave out bales of hay for them that went untouched. They had no interest in eating it. But now they're eating it, so I keep it out for them 24-7. We actually purchased this hay uh, a couple weeks ago. We picked the worst day. Well, because it's been so wet. You, you're trying to work around the weather. So, okay, this day's dry. It was finally We're dry. We're gonna get the hay. It was also 90. It was so hot. And uh, when he pulled up with that trailer full of, whew, A huge trailer, 250 bales of hay, it was huge. Giant trailer. We unloaded about 20 bales by hand, all by hand, up into we, the second story We don't story have loft. a hay elevator, so we gotta throw the hay up by hand. And we were like, no, we're gonna all die. <laughs> so I, wa I went down, her, uh, her dad's got one of those big lulls, you've seen it on the channel before. I hijacked the lull, brought it up here, we had our own custom hay elevator. <laughs> it worked. More industrial, less agricultural. Last one! So hot. All right, everybody, we finished up, and I wanted to call, I kept saying Dan every time I was gonna call you, and yeah. I'm like, why am I calling him Dan? My old hay guy's name was Dan. Oh, yeah. It was like, Dan, get... no, John, Dan. <laughs> so this is John from Blooms. Blooms Farm. Blooms Farm, and uh, they got beautiful looking hay. We just loaded up 250 bales. That is the biggest. Second cutting. Of second cutting, and that is the biggest load of hay we've ever done. Yeah. And it was kind of a unique, they've never seen that kind of hay elevator. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if you're looking in the Western PA, uh, what's your guys' radius? Um, yeah, Western PA. Western PA, they deliver and they help you load. And uh, they worked real hard today. So thank you guys so much. How do they contact you? Um, you can just call me. Phone eight, number? 814-410-7905. We'll put the number in the link below. And if you're looking for good second cutting for cows, or we're going to be feeding it to the goats too, and everybody. Or first cutting, we have a lot of first cutting. They got both, so and they deliver. That was big. We were looking so hard for somebody to deliver. So check them out. Link below. And now I'm going to take probably a swim somewhere. <laughs> you going That's swimming? A good idea. <laughs> You can tell by the way Kay's dressed, it's no longer a hot summer day. The end of summer is a good time to get your hay. It's when a lot, especially if you're looking for second cutting, it's when a lot of the second cutting is actually being cut. And if you can get a farmer to sell you hay before he puts it in storage, usually you can get it a little bit cheaper. The farmers like to sell it before they store it. So we found somebody who uh, hadn't put it in storage yet and we got their cutting. I look for second cutting hay because it's more nutrition for the cows. And because I'm milking her right now, through the winter, I'm going to want her nutrition to be good. If I wasn't milking her, I could go with the first cutting and that would be okay. What What's in this hay is some Timothy, orchard mix. I would have loved to have found uh, some with a little alfalfa in it, so I'm still going to be looking around for that. That'll be nice for her for the protein. Back in Connecticut, we already had our hay farmer. We knew him, uh, we knew when he was cutting, we knew prices, we got a good bulk price. When we moved here, it took us a couple months to find a new hay source. So when you're looking for a hay source, you wanna go directly to the farmers who are cutting it. You don't wanna buy hay from like tractor supply or like an agway. Uh, they're gonna be marking the hay up so much, you're gonna wind up spending a lot more money than you should to feed your livestock. So if you know someone who has cows in the area, someone who's milking a cow around you, 
A good thing to do would be at, to ask them. Like, where are you buying your hay? Could I have their number? Couldn't find anybody around here who was feeding their animals second cutting and wasn't cutting it themselves. Yeah, it's hard because farmers are all super busy making the hay in the summer, so it's hard to get one on the phone to ask them. <laughs> We wound up eventually finding this guy on Craigslist. It was a good second cutting. We actually drove out and looked at the hay, made sure it was something that we liked. Yeah, no farmer is gonna mind you cutting open a few bales. If you're buying 200, 300 bales of hay from a farmer, they don't mind and they expect you to cut a few open to look inside the hay bale and to take a couple home to see how the animals like it. Yeah, we got our free sample, brought it back, and we saw the cows liked it, so we ordered 200 bales. 250. <laughs> so what do you look for when you're looking for good dairy cow hay. For me what I was looking for is a hay that's still nice and green. It's leafy, you can see the leaves in it. It's not too stemmy, so it's not too hard and stemmy. It's nice, fluffy, and it smelled it smells great. And the cows liked it. <laughs> that's important if you have picky cows. It is important. And if you have like only one or two dairy cows, they're probably picky because you've spoiled them. A lot of times the hay farmers have had livestock of their own, which is helpful. They'll, they'll want to know what you're feeding. So if you say you're feeding a dairy cow, they'll know that, okay, it's okay to have some alfalfa. Now, I've never had a beef, but I've heard that what you can feed a beef cow is different than what you can feed a dairy cow. So all you beef cowers out there in the comments below, below let me know. Because sometimes you'll see or hear the farmer will say, well, it's not good for horses, but it's okay for cows because the quality is not as good. You want a really good, top quality hay for your dairy cows because this is what they're going to be living on all winter and providing milk for us at the same time. So we want the nutrition to be really high on the hay. That'll save us a lot of money even as far as how much grain we'll have to feed or how much chaff hay or things like that. If you are buying it from the farmer fresh off the field, you will have to consider the fact that you're going to need to cure the hay yourself. We have a really nice big hay loft, so we had the space to take all this hay, put it up there and let it cure. Curing means, as it does with anything, allowing the moisture to come out of the hay. As the farmer cuts the hay, they should be checking the moisture level of the hay, making sure that moisture level is not too high. When you get the hay, there will be a higher moisture level than what the end product will be after it cures. Uh, there is a safety zone. We were actually concerned when we got our delivery, it seemed a little bit wet to us. We had never got hay that fresh. Uh, so John, who we bought our hay from, was nice enough to come back a couple days later. Uh, he had already tested it himself, but he wanted us to be able to see it for ourselves. Our hay guy came, and we're going to do a check on the moisture of the hay bales, making sure it's going down to what we want it to be. I'll find the light for you, John. Seventeen. Seventeen. So what? The number that it's reading there. That's the moisture. Moisture per sixteen. Um. Yeah. So it looks like most of them are reading sixteen, which is good. Sixteen. Yep. Yeah. He brought what's called a hay probe. Uh, it's a reader that they stick in the probe into the hay. It reads the moisture content. Uh, he checked the numbers and he showed us, see, everything's in the safe zone. If it's not, if there's too much moisture in the hay, it gets warm and then it gets hot, like hot compost. It can actually start a fire. It can burn your whole barn down. Don't look so happy about that. It can burn your whole barn down. <laughs> it, it can burn your barn down. Barns burn down because of wet hay and it's not something you want to risk. So make sure if you do buy your hay fresh that the moisture content is in the safe zone. Before John came out and tested the hay, I was kind of worried about it. So I went and one thing you can do if you don't have the special thermometer to check the hay, it's a real long, it goes into the center of the hay bale, is just get a, a tent spike, some long metal rod of some kind. Stick it in the hay, wait a certain amount of time, pull it out and then feel it with your bare hand. It'll feel warm because that hay is still producing that heat, which is normal. 
If it's too hot to touch though, then you know it's in the danger zone and you should call somebody for help. I was working on my computer and uh, editing a video. Kate came running in. She was all panicked. Drama. She was I wasn't, like, I wasn't the panicked. barn's going to burn down. I did not do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. She was worried because well, she was reading if your hay gets to a certain temperature, if it gets, if the temperature keeps climbing, there's there could be a fire. The, what did it say? Call the fire department. It said if your hay is this many degrees, call the fire department. Fire is imminent. So, but our hay was not. Our hay was fine. Yeah, John was showed fine. us our hay was fine. And I wasn't that worried. I did not run in. Drama. Well, I saw you run in. I did not run. You were like, the barn's gonna burn. I did not. You're lying. You're drama. We paid four dollars a bale for second cutting, which in our area is a bit high, uh, but it was good quality hay, and it's been a very damp year, so there was less second cutting available. Back home, we used to pay five fifty for first cutting in Connecticut. So as far as hay prices go, it really depends on your local economy. One of the reasons we chose to move to Pennsylvania is because a lot of the farming, supplies, feed, hay, all are lower price. We earn the same income moving here, but we, we spend a whole lot less on the farm. So it's a good, we spend, we spend a little bit less on the farm. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but every bit helps. All right. Maybe next year we'll have a hay elevator, we'll see. We'll be looking on Craigslist for some hay elevators. <laughs> because that is probably, for us, that's probably one of the hardest days on the farm as far as physical work. Right? Getting so the hay. Getting the hay in the barn. We were not in our hay day. <laughs> Blah. Props to John because he not only delivered it, oh, yeah. but he helped us unload it bring it into the hayloft and his mom helped as well. Yeah, so if you're in the Western Pennsylvania area and you're looking for a hay supplier, John. Send us an email and we'll forward you his contact information. Yeah, he's a good guy, good hay, and uh, he even came back to show us that the hay was safe because we were worried. So we can't say enough good about John and his mom. We can link to his Facebook page as well. Yeah, we'll link to it. In tomorrow's episode of Homesteady, what am I doing? Why am I hanging clothing in trees? I'm gonna hang them in the spruce tree, they'll get that little pine saw sent to them. Leave a guess in the comments below and tune in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time to see if you were right. If you think our show is helpful, you can help support us in two ways. First, you can do all your shopping on Amazon. First, typing in www.amstudy.com. It will forward you to Amazon. We get a bonus for sending you there. Or for five bucks a month, you can become a Homesteady Pioneer, get bonus content, click there to learn more.